otherwise law-abiding citizens um, inappropriately, in my view. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Cruz. Uh, if I might pose a question to the senior senator from California. Um, in your response to Senator Cornyn, you mentioned that there's some 100 pages of the bill that specify particular firearms that, that if this bill were passed, Congress would have deemed prohibited. Uh, it seems to me that all of us should begin as our foundational document with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights provides that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The term, the right of the people, when the framers included it in the Bill of Rights, they used it as a term of art. That same phrase, the right of the people, is found in the First Amendment the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition their government for redress of grievances. It's also found in the Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. And, and the question that I would pose to the senior senator from California is, would she deem it consistent with the Bill of Rights for Congress to engage in the same endeavor that we are contemplating doing with the Second Amendment in the context of the First or Fourth Amendment, namely, would she consider it constitutional for Congress to specify that the First Amendment shall apply only to the following books and shall not apply to the books that Congress has deemed outside the protection of the Bill of Rights? Likewise, would she think that the Fourth Amendment's protection against searches and seizures could properly apply only to the following specified individuals and not to the individuals that Congress has deemed outside the protection of the Bill of Rights? Would Senator well, question? <laughs> Let me just make a couple of points in response. One, I'm not a sixth grader. Senator, I've been on this committee for 20 years. I was a mayor for nine years. I walked in, I saw people shot. I've looked at bodies that have been shot with these weapons. I've seen the bullets that implode. In, in Sandy Hook, youngsters were dismembered. Look, there are other weapons. I've been up, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. But after 20 years, I've been up close and personal to the Constitution. I have great respect for it. This doesn't mean that weapons of war and the Heller decision clearly points out three exceptions, two of which are pertinent here. And so I, uh, you, you, you know, I mean, it's fine you want to lecture me on the Constitution. I appreciate it. Just know I've been here for a long time. I've passed on a number of bills. I study the Constitution myself. I am reasonably well educated, and I thank you for the lecture. Incidentally, this does not prohibit, you use the word prohibit, it exempts 2,271 weapons. Isn't Mr. that enough for the people in the United States? M Mr. Do Chairman. they need a bazooka? Do they need. Uh, other high-powered weapons that military people use to kill in close combat? I don't think so. So I come from a different place than you do. I respect your views. I ask you to respect my views. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, Senator German, it's not, uh, Mr. Chairman, I can't add anything to that. Yeah. Senator Cruz. Mr. Chairman, I would ask yet another or another question of the senior senator of California. I think nobody doubts her sincerity or her passion. And yet at the same time, I would note that she chose not to answer the question that I asked, which is, in her judgment, would it be consistent with the Constitution for Congress to specify which books are permitted and which books are not, and, and to use the specific number? The answer number? is obvious, no. And, and if I may could ask, we, could we keep on the? You know, and I appreciate we have a discussion on books. I know that they have that in your state of Texas, where your um, educational boards tell people what books they should or should not read in their schools. Uh, something that we would not do in Vermont, but you know, you we're not going to talk about your your right. Well, yeah. But let's let's stick to guns. And I know, Senator just, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate your your acknowledging that the state of Texas allows books. Um, I, I would specify a little more. About child pornography books, child pornography it's, protected by the First Amendment. It's obvious that there are different tests on different amendments, and I think what the senator is going to point out was something that didn't occur to me at the moment. There are certain kinds of pornographic materials not be covered by the First Amendment. And is, is it the view of the senior senator from California that Congress should be in the business of specifying 
particular books, or for that matter, with respect to the Fourth Amendment, particular individuals who are not covered by the Bill of Rights. Sir, Congress is in the business of making law. The Supreme Court interprets the law. They strike down the law, they strike down the law. The tests in Heller with respect to unusual weapons and two other things, I think do not cover, in other words, they cover an exemption for assault weapons. And if this is brought up before the court, if it should pass, I'm sure that argument will be made. I would. Senator from Illinois, wish. That's exactly the point. The senator knows, having attended um, law school and professes to have some experience in the Constitution, none of these rights are absolute, none of them. And the Heller decision goes specifically to the question of this amendment and tells us when they were asked in the Heller decision, a panel, Heller 2, a panel of Republican appointed judges rejected a Second Amendment challenge to D.C.'s assault weapons ban and magazine limits. A Second Amendment challenge. The D.C. Circuit Court held that such laws, quote, do not effectively disarm individuals.